Welcome to an episode of Homebrewing. Today we're going to go over an Austin Homebrew 20th Anniversary All Grain Pale Ale Recipe. We'll be going through the entire process of brewing from scratch. I'm Scott and this is my co-brewer Rachel. Warning, this video is long. This video highlights all the steps in brewing and is intended for those of you who are thinking about brewing or already brewing extract and are thinking about taking the next step to all. Since we'll be going all grain today, We'll be using this 5 gallon ink blue cooler and false bottom that can be found online at Midwest Supplies for our mash tun set. False bottom's in. Now we're going to put in 10 pounds of grain. Check our water. Today's recipe requires one and a quarter quarts of water per pound of grain with the initial strike water temperature of about 160 degrees with one mash rest of 60 minutes. dough balls out. Yep, that's what it says next. Get all the dough balls out. Mix grain with the strike water very well, removing all the dough balls and measure the temperature. So they say 150 is the good temperature? Yep, ideal mass temperature. See, so we're at 157. It wasn't much of a drop. I'll mix it, keep mixing it for a second and see yeah. if we get the drop. May I add some cold water to it? Well, it's because it's about 149 degrees out here, so it's <laughs> going to be stable. <laughs> it's warm out here today. It's not going to be as dry if we go up higher temperature. It'll, It'll be sit. more sweet than dry? Yeah. Less fermentable sugars. It'll be unfermentable sugars. So after a few minutes of mixing and stirring in some cold water, we were finally able to get down to 150 degrees. Alright, I have to speak now. And after the greens in the hot water for 60 minutes, take the temperature readings every half an hour to ensure a stable starch conversion. And heating the sparse water, so 5 gallons of water is 175. And put it in the hot liquor tank. Is it a steel? Oh, okay. We're going to run off the water from the mash tank into there. We have to have that one. I'll add this water over there. Did you already put five gallons in there? No. It's got probably about three gallons left. I guess the cleanest way to measure it would be in that our food. Do you know where it is? I think it's over by the hot water here. So since our mash was now resting, we began to heat up our sparge water while Rachel provided us with some entertainment. I'm like the music video. Nope, it's all going to boil still. Alright, so our hot water is transferred to the hot liquor tank. It's going to stay here for another 30 minutes until we're ready to put it into the mash tun. So, this is the handy dandy contraption from Midwest Supplies. This stupid thing right here, this bolt, pushes down to the bottom, completely clogs up, makes this completely useless. So, I took top of a cap for a keg, cut a hole in it, it has enough little holes here to help um, move the wort through. Unfortunately I had it adjusted wrong and it got stuck so I had to pull all of the grains out and adjust this and now I'm going to put it back in. So after this I was able to reset our grains and we were able to get our mash going again. Like it did however take some time to get our grain bed to settle back down and get the wort to start flowing quick. That was 
you were wanting to do. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it did much. But you know, whatever. You're the head brewmaster. <laughs> Once our wort did finally settle, we were able to capture it in our brew kettle and do some first wort hopping with our first ounce of hops. Once the boil is under control, adjust the heat to a good rolling boil without boiling over. Add the bittering hops and set your timer for 60 minutes. At 60 minutes, you put in your one ounce of magnum. Add the flavor hops for the last 15 minutes, which is one ounce of cascades. And the aroma hops for the last five minutes is the one ounce howler how. So we don't have to measure anything. They're already in little packages. Yeah, one ounce, one ounce, one ounce. So 60 minutes, 15 and five. Easy enough. Very easy. This is the six gallons, six and a half gallons of wort. As you can see, our pot is very, very full. So we'll get this to a boil and we'll be stirring it vigorously and spraying the top off so it doesn't boil over, hopefully. And then we'll uh, go for an hour and then we'll start chilling it. So it's almost 98 degrees in the shade here. About 45 minutes into the boil. We're ready to add our uh, second hops addition, the oral flock, uh, some yeast uh, nutrients, and then we'll put the chiller in there to also sanitize the last 15 minutes. So I'll add those in just a minute. And an ounce of this. And here's the uh, oral flock, that little tab on the right, and then the one on the bottom is the yeast fuel. So we're going to add all this up, we're also going to add a little bit of corn sugar, 14 ounces of corn sugar. This is going to get, get a little bit drier feel, um, and it's also going to boost the alcohol by about 1%. We'll go ahead and get all those back in there now. Before adding any sugars, I highly recommend turning off the heat source. This will keep you from having any sort of caramelization due to the sugar on the bottom. Stir this in. We'll take the stir it in and start it back up. We'll put the chiller in here to sanitize the last. If you're going to use a chiller, I recommend the stainless steel chiller you see here from morebeer.com. Although stainless steel is slightly less conductive than copper, it makes up for it in its durability and ease of maintenance. Instead of using sanitizer, I'm just going to throw the chiller into the boil for the last 15 minutes. Check on our brew help. Resting peacefully. 
With five minutes left in the brew, it was time to add our third and final hop, Hother Tau, one of four noble hops. Which leads me to my question of the day. What is your favorite hop and why? Leave a comment down below. We need to be ready to stir for now. Five more minutes and we'll start cooling this thing down. I'm going to go ahead and sanitize the top here and uh, put this on top so it, we don't get any sort of bad stuff in there while we're waiting. At this point, if you didn't have a chiller, you could cover your wort and put it into an ice cold bath in your kitchen sink. Because it's so hot outside, the water coming through can't get cool enough to get us to our yeast pitching temperature. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and move it over to our carboy and then we'll put it into the cooler, put some water in there and some ice in there, get it down to the right temperature and then we'll pitch the yeast a little bit later and we'll also oxygenate it then too. Alright, so here we are. Uh, got our carboy sitting inside some cooler water, try to uh, cool it down a little bit more. So we can get to our pitching temperature. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and add some oxygen. i got this little uh, guy right here off of, uh, I got it from morebeer.com. Um, it just hooks up to one of these little oxygen containers you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's. So this just pops right in there. And hooks up here. And there we go. I think this will last probably about four or five batches for a little tank. Tanks run about ten bucks. That's it. And next we'll take the gravity reading, initial gravity, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm not going to drink this stuff, so I'm going to make sure I get this thief and uh, the little container with my hydrometer. Make sure they're really good and sanitized. And uh, go ahead and pull a sample now. We're at 1055 for starting gravity. Go ahead and pour that back in there. And I'm going to use a blow off tube versus this little airlock because uh, these yeast typically on these uh, IPAs will overflow. So I'm going to put this in here just for temporary, just to kind of hold it in there uh, until I get the hose out. The hose is in the bucket in the back. Alright, so got it cooled down with 74 and a half. We're going to be using uh, White Labs WLP001. Uh, it's a second generation for the yeast. I made a starter. Been going for about 24 hours, so I'm going to go ahead and pitch it down. This yeast likes somewhere between 70 and 75, is pretty much its ideal temperature. Got the uh, stirrer in there, so I gotta remember to stop before the stirrer goes in there too. There we go. This thing should be going crazy by the morning. Do a little stir. That's it. We'll cover it up. Be done for another week.